Good morning. Um, let me start by introducing myself. I'm uh, Joris Maes. I'm uh, from Belgium. I uh, work as a statistical consultant and uh, R programmer at the University of Ghent. And as you can see already um, from the slides, I work at the, the department Biostat, which is a biostatistical uh, group. So I am working with the bioengineering uh, bio department. Uh, I'm not actually involved in financial anal analysis myself. Uh, now you might wonder why does a guy from biology come to tell us here about about R. Well, I work a lot with time series. We have a lot of environmental data, which is basically exactly the same as the stock data and so on and so on. Um, therefore, I think I'm fit to show you the tool you can use. Now, I'm going to try to add as many examples as possible from financial analysis using packages that um, are used pretty often that are still in development as well, like the QuantMod package. Uh, but probably the interpretation of the plots and the results we're going to see is going to be up to you because I'm not even going to understand half of uh, the plots that I'm going to show you. Uh, what we focus on, what we're going to focus on uh, this course is uh, a couple of things. I'm going to go first over the basics and I've, uh, I'm going to stress I'm really, 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 uh, I really think that the basics are incredibly important. Because I have at my desk every day a couple of people coming, passing by, showing their code, asking for a question. I have this problem, I want to do that, but R is not working as it should. And most of the time it's not R that's not working as it should, it's them not really understanding how R works. So uh, I want to say from the start, really pay attention to the concepts. Because even if you have already uh, experience in, uh, in other programming languages like Java or C or C++, R is really a different beast. There are some small differences between R and other progr programming languages that make it um, behave rather differently. And if you use the things that you know from Java, the things that you know from C in R, you're going to get either code that's not going to work or code is going to be working very slow. Uh, over the course, what am I going to cover? Obviously the introduction. I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to use to work with R because you have different editors. I choose one, R Studio basically because that's the one I use the most, but uh, there are many more options. Then we're going to go over all the basics, the objects that you find in R, all the operations you can do with it, um, how to structure uh, your data. I'm going to emphasize time series. I'm going to see a couple of uh, packages and tools to work with those time series. I'm not going to go into advanced analysis. Uh, I'll show the basics, I'll show you where you can find the, the information, where you can find um, the, the analysis tools that you might need, that, that you were, were looking for. But um, it's really course focusing on R. I mean, if you can do it with one analysis technique, you can do it with most other, excuse me, with most other analysis techniques. The thing with R is that it's an incredibly vast language. You have over 5,000 packages by now that are add-on packages to R filled with tools from people from all over the world, from all kind of different uh, fields of interest. So rather than getting information about how to do a specific analysis in R, I'm going to try you to show how to find the information you need to be able to do the analysis yourself. And most of the time, I learn R from the internet, most of the time it just comes down to read the manual. The only thing is you have to be able to read the manual. And for that, we're going to go through the concepts and all the things that are mentioned in those manuals. Uh, for the people following on the slides, they're probably going to look a little bit different uh, than the ones I have because I updated uh, some last night still. Good. R itself. Uh, what is R? R is most often known as a statistical package or a statistical tool, which it is. It is developed for statistics in the first place, but it is also a programming language. And it's important to realize that you're also working with a programming language. And it's a Turing complete programming language, meaning you can do anything with it you want. If you want to program World of Warcraft, it's possible, provided that you have unlimited amount of memory and unlimited amount of uh, calculation capacity, which you probably don't have. So that's the second thing. R is a programming language you can do anything with, but it shines in certain areas. And as you know, most of the time, if you want to do something, uh, the first thing is grab the right tool. 
when are you going to uh, reach for R? Anything that is uh, data manipulation, anything that is statistical analysis, um, R really shines on those. The nice thing about R is that it's uh, very strongly supported by the scientific community. It's developed by professors in statistics, in computer science, and so on. Uh, there are tons of researchers publishing their research with an R package. And the reason why they do that is because R is free. It's free as in free beer. Now, if I say that two guys in the physics department, they run outside, they phone the lab, they say, stop all the licenses, buy the new machine. If I say that in, a, in a, an audience from a, a more financial background, most of the time they look at me and say, like, it's free, but yeah, well, can you trust it? It's a good question. Can you trust R? Uh, well, in my experience, you can trust R more than most of the commercial packages for the very simple reason that it is tested every day by literally hundreds of thousands of users. If I see a problem in R, something that I think that might be a bug or an outcome that is not really um, what I expected, I mail it to the R core team. 95% of the time I get a mail back, you've been stupid, you have to do something else. 5% of the time I really found a bug, they change it and probably in the next week you get a release that uh, is again bug free. It's even with the individual packages, I had it uh, two weeks ago that I found something, um, um, a plot actually that didn't work, that, that, that should work, mailed the guy, half an hour later I got an updated source code from him so I could just work on. That is a service that I've never found with other competitors of R, mainly SAS, SPSS, uh, Excel. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta say it, Excel is probably the most used statistical tool in the world, LS. But yeah, also, so be it. Now, one disadvantage of R is that it is completely command line driven. So there is no point and click interface. There has been many attempts of making a point and click interface for R, but basically it doesn't really catch on because for me, the command line, the fact that R is command line driven is actually uh, an advantage instead of a disadvantage. Once you get used to the coding, once you get used to just typing a few lines to do a rather complex analysis and then rerun it again by selecting the lines and running it, it works a lot faster in the end than having to point and click every time through all the menus. So, that's R. Now, where does it differ from other languages? Two very important uh, concepts. First of all, R works completely vectorized. Uh, vectorized means that you actually do not really need loops. For some cases you do, but in most of the time if you want to, um, for example, add two series of numbers together, you can just say take series one plus take series two. That's it. No need for a loop. Matrix calculations, no need for a loop. And even for most of the, of the data manipulation things, uh, you either don't need a loop or if you have specific um, tools that will automatically loop over your whole data frame. We're going to see later on. The other part, and that's the one where most of the people get confused, that R is actually a language coming from the functional programming uh, part. Functional programming, programming languages are languages like uh, Lisp, uh, Haskell, Clojure. It's a group of languages not very often used, uh, and they have a very specific way of working. Uh, in R, for example, the core is really the function. A function is just an object like any other object. It means it has a value, um, you can change the value if you want, it has a name, and you can just pass it as an argument to another function, which makes for a whole different way of programming. Most of the time you're used to call a function uh, or write your own function. Now here you can pass a function as an object, you can go check the value and we'll see why that is very, very important. The other thing that you really should remember is that you always have a result from a function. The result can be null, but there's always something returned. Good, very quick. Installing ARIA is not difficult. You go to the website www.rproject.org. I can show you that one. You can really see. Um, come on, where are you? This is the website. You can really see that it's made by computer nerds and professors in statistics. <laughs> they didn't really have a marketing department there. 
but anything you need to know about R, you find on here. Uh, and one in particular is here, Kran. You can click on that, then you go to uh, the Kran website. I get it ready down here. On the Kran website, you have download links. So you can download R for any uh, OS you like. If you're working on a Linux distribution that is uh, esoteric, really check uh, the README files. But they have for almost every distribution, they have a specific uh, set of instructions. The other thing that's very important um, is these ones, the task views. I'll just show you. You have a list, and again, it doesn't really look appealing, <laughs> but it really contains a lot of information. It's a list of big, broad topics. Um, and what they do for every topic is just give an overview of all the tools you have. For example, in finance, if you look there, uh, you see immediately the name of the maintainer, Dirk Edelbeutel. You're going to hear more about him because he's one of the big shots in R, writing a lot of packages, uh, specifically for financial analysis as well, but also for in, uh, incorporation of C++ in R. And then you have a whole list of information about regression models, then everything about time series, and so on and so on. And here you see already why it is rather difficult to show you how to perform an analysis in R. Because you can count the packages. All the, the blue you see is different packages, and every package contains between 10 and 200 functions. That is really a lot. Um, the task view. If you downloaded everything, then you just read the instructions. Uh, on uh, Windows, it's very easy. Just run the installer. Uh, there's one thing that you should keep in mind if you're working on a Windows system. Um, default installation folder is always in the program files most of the time. Don't do that, please, because Windows has a very specific way of dealing with that folder. You don't have enough access to it if you want to change your own settings in R. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into that, but you have a number of plain text files basically containing your environment variables and the settings for both your console and your editor. Um, you can change them very easily unless they're in the program files, then you can't. And for the rest, you just leave everything as is, so that's not really that difficult. <coughs> 